Hey guys, and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Um, in a previous video, uh, relatively recently, I mentioned an update to my multi-and gate. Uh, one of the first tutorials I'd ever done was a multi-and gate, and I updated it so that it could be vertically stackable, whereas the original version was only really stackable to two, and even then it was fairly large. Um, it was one wide, but uh, trying to stack it is what made it a monster and it was impossible to stack to more than two um, so I updated it and made it stackable vertically but a lot of people you know they see an AND gate and they say okay that's cool and they think of some basic ideas like combination locks or whatever um, but there are much more complex things you can do that stem from simple logic gates when you put them together so I want to show you one such example of using that stackable multi-and gate which is back there but before we get to that um, I kind of have to go into a little background so what we're gonna be doing is a seven uh, sorry a three bit binary encoder and decoder um, technically the AND gate is not required for the encoder just for the decoder but I just want to make sure um, to kind of explain what exactly is going on here so what is a binary encoder? A binary encoder, as this says, uh, this encodes the numbers 1 through 7 into binary because the numbers, well, technically 0 through 7, but, you know, who cares about 0? Um, so binary, in case you don't know, is a series of zeros and ones that is used to represent all kinds of numbers, pretty much any number that fits within their range. So if you have the numbers 0 through 7, you can encode that using only 3 bits that are each 0 or 1. Um, so this is a very simple binary encoder. So I pick the number I want, and it encodes it into a binary string of zeros and 1s, in this case represented by lamps, where they're off, they're 0, and where they're on, they're 1. So right now it's a 0, so none of them are on, so they're all 0. If you want to do 1, then we see... The left, uh, sorry, the rightmost bit is one. Now that means this is the least significant bit, which is usually how binary is uh, represented, with the smallest part on the right, the largest part on the left, just like in uh, decimal. You know what you're used to when you have the number ten, right? The zero is the ones place, and the one is the tens place. So smallest parts are on the left or on the right. Sorry, I'm getting my left and rights confused after all of this. Anyway, so that's a one. Now if we turn that off and we do 2, then we see the second one, which is simple enough. But now if we go to 3, what do you think will happen? Those of you who are familiar with binary know exactly what will happen. But no, the last lamp will not turn on. Instead, we get these two. So this is 0, 1, 1. Because, um, so this is 1 times 2 plus 1 times 1, which is 3. All right? And then if we wanted to do 4, turn that on, then we have that one on, which is 1 times 4 plus 0 plus 0 is 4, and etc. etc. This goes up to 7, and it just encodes the number as a binary string of bits, right? So how does this work? This is, again, a very simple one. Basically, this works by predefining what each one uh, corresponds to in binary. So this is the line that we have for our least significant bit, our smallest bit on the right. Then we have the middle bit and the most significant bit on the left. Um, so basically we just have all of these levers going into these torches. So these torches when they're on are suppressing the torches on the side of this block which light up the lines. So basically, when you flip a switch, it turns that torch off, which turns the line off, which allows all of the torches on the side to turn on, and therefore light up the line here to represent the number. So everywhere that we have a torch on the side, that bit will be 1 when that lever is flipped. So in this case, it's 1, so there are no torches except on the first least significant bit, um, so when we flip that switch, if I can do that from here, 
I, there. there you go. It turns that off, which allows this torch to turn on, and then that bit turns on. But the others are not, because there are no torches. And so that's really all there is to it. Um, we just, for each number, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, um, we put a torch, uh, and then we put torches on the side above each bit that should be turned on for that number. So binary encoding is easy. How do we do binary decoding? It's a little bit more tricky. Um, but this is where our multi-AND gates come in. So this may look a little different if you watched my previous video, but if you look over here, it looks basically the same as my multi-AND gates, only with iron instead of grass, right? So we've got these torches over here. Each one of these torches is corresponding to a single input. Um, and only if all of these torches is turned on, does the output turn on. So in this case, we have output down there because I left all of these on. So on the bottom, we have the inputs through repeaters just going directly out into the AND gate, which means um, this gate will be on if all of the bits are on, and that corresponds to 7. So if each one of these levers is a bit, then everyone that's on is a 1, everyone that's off is a 0, and then all of these AND gates, just each one tests for a specific combination of bits. Um, so let me just show you how that's done. So if you watch my other video, you'll know how to make the stackable multi-AND gates here. Um, so the only thing that's different is this part here, are basically these two rows. So first you have this row, which you can see is a torch tower. And uh, all this is really doing is taking these um, inputs here, and it's transmitting their values all the way up through the tower so that every single AND gate gets the same input, right? So that's easy enough to understand. Um, and then what we do here, you'll notice that if we want just the inputs, we put repeaters, because that takes the um, power of the block, so whatever the input is, uh, through here, right? But if we want to test for a zero, we replace those inputs, <clears throat> sorry, we replace those repeaters with torches, because torches invert it. So what this is saying is if this is off, not if this is on, right? Um, so basically anywhere we want a zero, we put a torch. Anywhere we want a one, we put a repeater. And uh, that's pretty much it. And then we just take the output of each of those and uh, you know, put a sign saying what each one is, because yeah. So in this case, zero one or sorry, one zero one uh, should be five. And if we look, it is five. So yeah. Or here we have uh, zero zero uh, one zero zero, because remember it's left to right, uh, and we're looking at it backwards because the bits go that way. Um, so it's one zero zero, right? Because repeater torch torch one zero zero, which is four, and that's wait six. Crap! No, sorry. Right. Um, so there was one little issue that I ran into while I was building this that I forgot, but it's very important to remember. So the way these torch towers work is by transmitting a signal upwards through blocks using torches. But torches uh, invert signals. So every other block, uh, so every other gate, is actually getting all their bits inverted. So for example, this is a 1, right? But because that's a 1, this torch turns off, which means this block is getting a 0, not a 1. Uh, so every other row here, you switch uh, torches and repeaters around. So every odd number row, so 1, one 3, 5, and 7, those all uh, have the correct inputs. Right? They have the correct bits just coming in, so then you use repeaters for ones and uh, torches for zero. 
But the even number rows, 2, 4, and 6, um, are all getting inverted signals from these torch tower, from this torch tower. So you switch whether you're testing for ones or zeros. So because this is an even numbered row, um, these torches actually represent one and not zero. And the repeaters represent zero and not one. It's a little confusing. It actually took me uh, a couple minutes to realize why my system wasn't working the first time when I figured that out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a little subtle thing that makes a big difference, so keep it in mind. So yeah, in this case, we are looking at this co the correct way. So this is 1, 1, 0, which is 4 plus 2 plus 0, which is 4, 5, 6. So this one is 6. Uh, and then the next one up is an odd numbered row. So this is 1, 0, 1. And uh, basically, in, in this demo, so all of these are turned on. So you can see what the outputs are, you know, or what the inputs to the gates are, because you know they're all on. So anywhere it's on, it's getting the right input. Anywhere it's off, it's getting, you know, the inverted input. So that helped. Uh, so here we have one zero zero, zero one one, zero one zero, and zero zero one, and that goes from seven down to one. Um, and now in this case, I'm just using lamps to, you know, show what the output is, but this can go on into anything else. For example, if I were to have a binary adder over here, we could do math on some numbers. Um, or, I'm sorry, so if we were to put on this side a binary adder, we could do math on some of these numbers and then lead them back into this system to output the number in decimal again. So let's say I had two of these set up, one produce, you know, one set to two and one set to five. Um, then I could lead that into an adder, uh, which would add them using binary addition, and then would put them out in binary, and then we lead that result through here, and then we would get a seven, right? Um, and just so that you can see this works, if I take out the middle. So that's a 101, one, which is 5. We have 5 lit up. So yeah. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do binary addition. That might be for another tutorial. Um, I made what's called a half adder once, which will add two bits together, but it will not um, accept any carried, uh, any, any digits carried over from a previous um, from a previous bit. So if I were to add two bits together, it worked. But if there were like two two-bit numbers, right, and the first ones added and needed to carry, I couldn't carry it in. Um, because as it turns out, the logic for a full adder that accepts carries is a little more complicated than simply like chaining two half adders together. Um, but it's not too difficult, so if I, uh, if anyone wants it or if I feel like doing it later, I will show you guys how to do binary addition and maybe even show a combination with all of these pieces together. But this video is just about how these, this stackable multi-and gate um, allows you to do things like binary decoding. Um, and that would be useful if you have something else like this, doing binary encoding, so that you can work on binary values uh, in between without the user ever knowing. Um, so yeah, and also one last thing. So this is pretty high up, right? And this is only three bits. Um, so you need two to the n different um, AND gates to decode an n bit number. So if you have a five bit number, you need two to the power of five of these gates. And each one is too high. So it's 2 to the n plus 1 spaces um, tall. So in this case, it's 3. So it's 2 to the 4th power, which is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. I should have been able to do that off my top of my head. But 16, so it needs to be 16 blocks tall. So if we look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
I did it in 13. One, two, three, four. oh, it would be 16, sorry. First of all, I forgot to count the bottom one, so it's 14, but I don't have one for zero. So you actually, I suppose technically you don't need um, an AND gate for zero, um, but you probably should have one. I just didn't put it here for demo. Um, and so yeah, so that would be pretty tall. Um, but if you were to go into like a full byte, which is eight bits, then you start getting like, you need two to the ninth power spaces tall, and that's a huge number. But here's the key. You don't have to um, stack these all together. You can split it up. So you can take maybe half of these over here and then take the top half, move them over here next to it, and then just run these lines into that other half as well. Because you know that there will always be zero coming out of this, out of all of these gates, if they're higher than the maximum number up here. And so if it ever, you know, they're not going to interfere with each other. So yeah. So that's me rambling. What's new? But yeah, so multi-and gates used as a binary decoder. And then a binary encoder that doesn't use multi-and gates, but is just there so you can see how these two relate to each other and can be worked together. So uh, until next time, keep encoding, keep decoding, and keep redstoning.